power plant in Europe, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, into a war zone. This is a fact. The Russians' armed provocation, shelling, deployment of terrorists on the territory of the station under the Russian flag. Now, Europe and neighboring regions face the threat of the radiation pollution. This is a fact. Now, what is the Chernobyl? The Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has six reactors. Only one reactor exploded in Chernobyl. The IAEA mission should take permanent control of the situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant as soon as possible, and Russia should unconditionally stop nuclear blackmail and completely withdraw from the station. Indeed, we should honestly talk about the point that values are perceived differently in different parts of the world. There's different approaches, but everywhere in the world, life has value. Peace has value. Economic prosperity has value. All countries, if they respect themselves and their people, punish for murder and not honor the executioners. However, we see that there is a country that is not behaves differently and is proud of uh, doing so. It rewards murderers and encourages executioners. And this is a threat not only for Ukraine, thousands of Ukrainians were killed by the Russian invaders. Dozens of our cities were destroyed by Russian artillery. Russia does not comply with fundamental conventions on the prisoners of war. This is something that was also mentioned today. The deliberate killing by the Russian occupiers of our prisoners of war in Olenivka became one of the most terrible pages in the history of Europe. And there is an immediate need for a UN fact-finding mission in Olenivka, and the mandate of which should be extended to cover all Ukrainian POWs currently held by Russian forces. There is no such war crime that the Russian occupiers have not yet committed on the territory of Ukraine. But if Russia is not stopped now and in Ukraine, if it is not stopped by the victory of Ukraine, then all these Russian murderers will inevitably end up in other countries, Europe, Asia, Africa, Latin America. There are traces of Russian war criminals everywhere, and we must all get united and act decisively as soon as possible. ...of a nuclear catastrophe. We took note of the explanations of the Secretary General for why he did not take part in yesterday's meeting. Today's meeting, however, is formally not related to developments on the ground at all and is meant to demonstrate the unfailing support of Western delegations for any actions of the Kyiv regime. We have predictably heard plenty of mantras about Russian aggression. As we have already said, over the past 200 years, no other explanation for European security issues except for references to Russia's actions has emerged in the West. Today, we also heard many claims about the catastrophic consequences of six months of hostilities for the civilian population of Ukraine. No one is arguing that it is difficult for Ukrainians today. However, the responsibility for this lies with the Kiev regime, which came to power in 2014 as a result of an anti-constitutional coup carried out with the help of a number of Western states. From the very beginning, the new Maidan authorities have been steadily leading the country to disaster, choosing the path of Russophobia and the glorification of Nazi criminals. Thus, according to the most conservative estimates, more than 60% of the population of Ukraine was deprived of the opportunity to realize their Russian-speaking identity, contrary to all relevant international conventions and Ukraine's obligations. Their Western backers, blinded by the geopolitical goal of weakening Russia, made it clear from the beginning they would cover up any crimes committed by the Kiev authorities and turn a blind eye to things that they would never allow in their own countries. The Kiev regime fully demonstrated its criminal nature when it burnt dissenters alive in the House of Trade Unions in Odessa and dropped bombs and shells on the civilian population of Donbass. In this senseless crusade against itself, Ukraine lost Crimea and provoked armed resistance from Donetsk and Lugansk residents who took up arms in the name of freedom and the future of their children. This war 
which claimed the lives of civilians for eight years, could have ended if Kiev had fulfilled the Minsk agreements. However, neither the Ukrainian authorities nor their foreign patrons needed this. They openly stated this once again at the beginning of this year while threatening to abandon their non-nuclear status. In such a context, in order to establish peace in the Donbass and to prevent the obvious threats to Russia emanating from Ukraine, we had no choice but to launch a special operation to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine, the goals of which are being successfully and steadily fulfilled. I repeat once again, if the Minsk agreements had been implemented, no special operation would have been needed, but the regime in Kiev decided otherwise. The criminal shelling of the republics of Donbass continues. In the Donetsk People's Republic, more than 800 and 40 people are estimated to have died on the line of contact since the beginning of the escalation in February, about 2,800 injured. In the Luhansk People's Republic, 80 people were killed and more than 250 were injured. Approximately 100 civilians have been killed in just four weeks since the previous meeting on July 29th. The armed forces of Ukraine are purposefully destroying civilian infrastructure, including kindergartens, schools, and medical facilities, power lines, and ga gas pipelines. They do not spare even those cities in Donbas that until recently were under their control, such as Lysychansk, for example. And our former Western partners, instead of condemning their Ukrainian mentees, are supplying them with more and more new types of weapons, which reach areas that Kiev could not previously reach. In doing this, they are becoming accomplices in crimes against the civilian population. And given that the use of some artillery systems, as the Ukrainians themselves admit, is impossible without coordinating the targets with suppliers, they are becoming co-perpetrators as well. This primarily concerns the American HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems, which were used, for instance, to strike the correctional facility in Yelenivka on July 29th, claiming the lives of more than 50 Ukrainian prisoners of war. We know that the president of Ukraine is well aware of the fact that it is the armed forces of Ukraine who are behind this crime, despite the fact that he sold us a false version today of Russia being responsible.